In this video, we want to talk about the electron configuration of ions. Uh, you may recall from earlier in the semester, there are cations and anions. Cations are positively charged, and anions are negatively charged. Let's start with the anions. An anion is negatively charged because it has extra electrons. So for example, if I think about nitrogen, nitrogen has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And you should be getting good at this. I could use the shorthand notation, the noble gas configuration. I could put helium in brackets, which would represent the 1s2, and then 2s2, 2p3. And that would also be a proper way of writing the electron configuration for nitrogen. If nitrogen is an anion, if nitrogen has a negative charge, of course I have to indicate that negative charge on the symbol. And so, for example, a nitrogen with a negative one means he has one extra electron. The one extra electron continues filling into orbitals according to Aufbau, all the rules we learned before. And so nitrogen with a negative one would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Um, so for anions, you continue filling in electrons just as you normally would using Aufbau rules and writing normal electron configurations. Nitrogen with a negative 2 would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And nitrogen with a negative 3 would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Notice that nitrogen with a negative 3 um, has the same electron configuration as neon does. Neon is also 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. These have the same electron configurations, and when species have the same electron configuration, we say that they are isoelectronic. So isoelectronic means having the same electron configuration as. Nitrogen with a negative 3, you may recall from earlier in the semester, is the charge that nitrogen normally takes on in an ionic compound. And it is no coincidence that with that charge, he has the same electron configuration as the nearest noble gas. That is sort of the beauty of this. This is how it works. This is why it works. The, neg the normal negative charges of the nonmetals in ionic compounds give them the same electron configuration as the noble gas at the end of their row. They gain enough electrons to be isoelectronic with that noble gas to their right and that's what makes them stable. If we were to look to see what N with a negative 1 was isoelectronic with, he would be isoelectronic with oxygen. He has the same electron configuration as oxygen. Nitrogen with a negative 2 has the same electron configuration as fluorine. So isoelectronic having the same electron configuration. Now when we get to the cations, it gets just a little bit trickier, so let's look at that. For cations, we're looking at positively charged ions. And cations are positively charged because they are missing electrons. They have lost electrons, several different ways of saying that. So for example, if I look at lithium, normal lithium, his electron, neutral, I guess I should say, lithium, his electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. If lithium becomes a plus one ion, that's because he has lost one electron and he's got three, the one that he loses is his valence electron. The valence electron is the outside electron. Might be more than one, in this case it is just one. His highest quantum shell electron, his highest shell electron. So lithium would lose this electron in the 2s orbital, and his electron configuration would be 1s2. That would make him isoelectronic with helium. And again, that's no coincidence. We talked about a minute, uh, a minute ago with the anions. This is the natural and normal plus charge that lithium would have in an ionic compound, and this gives him the same electron configuration as helium, which is a noble gas. We could do some others, for example, calcium, his neutral electron configuration. Let's use the shorthand notation. Start with argon, and then it would be 4s2. So that is calcium's electron configuration for the neutral species. 
His valence electrons includes these two in the 4S shell. These are his two valence electrons. A, uh, a quick way to determine the number of valence electrons for anybody in an A group is to go up to the group number. So silicon would have four valence electrons, chlorine has seven, calcium has two. That works with all of the A group elements. So calcium has two valence electrons. If calcium were to have a plus one charge, the one electron he would lose would be one of his valence electrons. So calcium with a plus one charge would look like argon 4s1. He would be isoelectronic with potassium. You notice this is exactly the same electron configuration as potassium. Calcium likes to form a plus two charge in ionic compounds and calcium with a plus two charge would have the electron configuration of argon or if we wanted to write it out with a little bit more detail, we would write neon 3s2 3p6. But calcium, either way you look at it, both of these represent the elect electron configuration of calcium plus two. They also represent the electron configuration of argon. Calcium plus two is isoelectronic with argon. So a lot of these, the group 1A and group 2A metals, you can figure out their electron configuration if you form the cation by simply walking backwards. But if you get to elements here in the transition elements or the larger main group elements, it gets a little trickier. So let's look at electron configurations for cations of transition metals and heavier main group elements. If we want to look at somebody, for example, let's look at vanadium. Vanadium's neutral electron configuration is argon, 4s2, 3d3. I hope you've been practicing that and are getting better. So vanadium it begins on the fourth row. We would use argon for our shorthand notation, 4s2, 3d123. If vanadium has a positive charge, and metals in ionic compounds do have uh, positive charges. Metals are the cations. But vanadium with a plus one, that means he would lose one electron. Now you might think, well, he's going to lose one of these 3D electrons because I wrote them in last, but he's not. He will not lose a 3D electron. He will lose one of his 4S electrons because he will lose electrons in the highest quantum number shell the highest shell. Four is bigger than three, and so vanadium will lose an electron out of 4s rather than 3d. So vanadium with the plus one would look like argon, 4s1, 3d3. You'll notice that this is not isoelectronic with titanium, which would be just walking backwards one. So be very careful. You can't just walk backwards with these elements in the transition metals and the higher main group metals. So vanadium would be 4s1, 3d3. We also know that these transition elements could have more than one possible ionic charge, and that's why we have to use Roman numerals. So vanadium might also, might also have a plus two charge. If we look back up here at the neutral guy, he will lose two electrons from his highest shell first. So vanadium with the plus two would have both of these electrons missing. Oops, I forgot my argon. Vanadium with a plus two would look like argon. He would have both of these electrons missing, and then he'd have his 3d3. We probably wouldn't even write the 4s2. We would simply write the 3d3. So vanadium with a plus two charge looks like argon 3d3. And that's what we would write for his electron configuration. Now, if vanadium were to form a plus three charge, and it could happen, his first two electrons would be out of the 4s orbital, but he needs to lose a third electron, and then at that point, he would start taking out of his 3d shell. So looking back at the neutral species, removing three electrons, we would end up with argon 3d2. He'd have both of his 4s electrons missing and one of his 3d electrons missing. So you have to be careful. You cannot simply walk backwards. This is not, this is not isoelectronic with calcium, which would be three boxes back. Calcium does not look like this. 
Um, one of the reason why the transition metals have uh, almost every single transition metal will have a plus two charge possible is because of losing the S electrons in whatever row they're in um, that provides some stability. They're, those are easy to lose. We'll talk more about being easy or hard to lose in a little bit. Um, if I get down here to the higher um, main group metals, the higher main group metal elements here, for example, let's look at germanium. Germanium's neutral electron configuration is argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p2. That is neutral germanium. If germanium were to form an ion, let's say he forms a plus one ion, he would lose his electrons from the highest shell. And you notice at this point the highest shell has s's and p's. He's going to lose them from the p's before he loses them from the s's. So germanium with a plus one would look like argon. Argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p1, where he has lost one of those electrons. Germanium with a plus two would look like argon, 4s2, 3d10, where he has lost both of his 4p electrons. Germanium with a plus three, I'd now reach down and start taking out of the four s's. The three d's would stay intact until I lose all of the electrons in my fourth shell. Once I lose all the electrons in my fourth shell, then I would start taking out of the three d. So the order is highest shell. You always remove electrons from the highest shell. You always remove them from the furthest right orbital, if you want to think of it that way, the last orbital that you put in, in that highest shell. So I would remove from the 4P, then the 4S, and then if I had to, I'd start pulling from the 3D.